Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. State Representative Brad Clippert. Um, I'm here with Pastor Steve Winery from Calvary Chapel Church in Kennewick, Washington. Our topic of conversation is, today is, is Initiative 1552. Initiative 1552, which is otherwise known as the Bathroom Initiative, because in Washington State, a five-member panel, which is called the Human Rights Commission, which were each and every one of them appointed by the governor of Washington State, made a decision in Washington State that we have bathrooms in Washington State that it does, if you, whatever gender you identify with, that's the bathroom you get to use. So if I am a male and I identify, I identify with the female gender, then I can use a female bathroom. I, in my heart, in my mind, feel that's totally and completely unacceptable that a five-member panel appointed by the governor can, can thrust that across, upon the entire state of Washington. So I fully support this initiative, encourage you to get involved, and Pastor Winery, I, Pastor Steve, I'd love to hear your thoughts and your ideas on this subject. Well, when it first came out, I, I just thought it was ridiculous. You know, like you said, it's a five-member panel who goes through and decides for the rest of the uh, state um, what's going to be happening as far as privacy issues in, in bathrooms. And, you know, obviously I'm, I'm a man and um, I'm, you know, I, I don't know, I'm just not really worried about women walking into a men's restroom. You know, I, it, it's kind of one of those things, if a woman, walk, woman walked into a men's restroom, they kind of get what they get. But, you know, men walking into a restroom where my daughter um, expects some reasonable sense of privacy, that's, that is not good. And we are living in a culture that's getting more and more coarse, more and more uh, ridiculously over the top as far as uh, uh, sexual immorality and um, just flat out sexual assault. And people come up with this without uh, bringing it before the people of the state. And there's obviously a reason that they didn't bring it before the people of the state because it probably wouldn't pass at that point. You know, you, you have people who have been appointed to, uh, to certain areas of government and they obviously have agendas. And um, so they don't trust the people of the state uh, to make laws for themselves or to uh, put the representatives in that will make the laws uh, that, the, that the people would like to have. Um, they have an agenda, they wanna go in a certain direction and they're just going to force this. And it's exactly what's happened in this situation. Um, I really appreciate um, your work in getting this sh this initiative out uh, because this needs to stop. This is Amen. this is just a ridiculous Thank position Thank you. Uh, that we have in our state. Yeah, um, there are there are stores that have uh, fully uh, supported this, and you know, frankly, I just you know, it's like if you can't figure out um, that men going into a woman's restroom or men going into a woman's locker room is out of line. You know, I, I don't need to support your business and you shouldn't be in business in the first place. Something's wrong, you know, at this point. And um, I heard a previous guest uh, speaking with you and uh, he was making the statement that um, he was shocked that we would even be in this position. Uh, it's, just, it's just amazing the ridiculous positions that people can get in um, when they are following uh, the whole politically correct motivation in, instead of having some kind of common sense. So yeah, absolutely opposed to this. I've been opposed uh, to it since it, since it first came out. Um, obviously there are implications for uh, Christians and churches and, and uh, that kind of thing. You have, the, you have uh, government officials who are deciding uh, standards of morality uh, for all the rest of us and they are not scientific standards of mora morality. They're not historically uh, correct, so, you know, if I could use that term, uh, standards for morality. Uh, there's, there's a reason that there are men's and women's restrooms and they've been there for a long time and there's good reason for it. Yeah, no, I and I think stop. about that. This nation, 56 men pledged their lives, mm -hmm. their fortunes and their sacred honor when they signed the Declaration of Independence and they fought for our freedom and they fought to make this nation a, the United States of America. So we've existed since, you know, essentially since that time, since 1776 and, and becoming a nation and we have our constitution and everything. So we've existed for well over 200 years with women's bathrooms and with men's bathrooms. And now for some reason here just recently, a small percentage of people have thrust this on us 
to where no longer do we have a distinct women's bathroom and men's bathroom in Washington State. We have this, this other thing to where however I identify myself, that's the bathroom I get to use. And, you know, I was just, I did a radio uh, program just before coming here today. And two things, one of them that you brought up already, they asked me, well, Representative Clippert, um, why is it that this was never brought before the legislature? Because it was actually offered as a bill in a committee and it was never got a hearing. Why did that happen? And I, and I mentioned to them that they had the votes at that time. They could have easily, if they chose to, push that bill through. Mm -hmm. But just like you say, that was my response, that I don't think they pushed the bill because I don't think they had the votes to get it through, number one, through the legislature. And, you know, Brad, if they did, uh, that's, that's a mark on their record. And doing ridiculous things in the legislature will get you voted out of office. Amen, as it should. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And so, you know, if, if, if they want to run this through the reg leg legislature and put their name on it, you know, then we, then we can take and we can, I'll broadcast that at my fellowship. You know, these are, these are the people who um, are in, air, in our area who voted for this nonsense, you know, vote appropriately. <laughs> you know? And the, one, the reason why I asked you here today, why I'm so yeah. glad that you're here today, is I'll have to admit, I wasn't there that Sunday, but I heard an, a fellow parishioner of your church, which is Calvary Chapel in Kennewick, Washington, that you said um, from the podium that um, when this was thrust upon us, because it does not exempt churches, it does not, this, yeah. this state law affects our churches too, that, that you made the comment, not in my church. Not it's now, not going to happen. Not yeah. ever, never. Yeah, it's it's ridiculous. If a if a biologically um, uh, if a biological male goes into the women's restroom, they're going to be escorted out. Thank and, you. And I don't care what the legislature says. You know, there there are standards of righteousness and standards of morality that are flat out you know stated in Scripture, and we don't violate those because you know, crazy people in Olympia decide that we should. And, uh, and, and I said crazy people. I don't think they're crazy. I think that they have an agenda, you know, but it's a crazy agenda. <laughs> and so, um, yeah, if, if, if that kind of stuff went, went on in our fellowship, then, um, you know, I've already, I've already told guys, you know, it, it's just not going to happen. And so, yeah. It's, uh, it's interesting, too, what you said. And you clarified that point. They're not crazy. One of our most recent... Um, Supreme Court justices who just died mm -hmm. said, said, I don't argue against people, I argue against ideas, because there's some really great people out there who've come up with some really bad ideas. Yeah, this is a and bad this is, idea. This is a, this is a really bad idea. Yeah. So I am asking each and every one of you who are watching today to go, if you use your computer, go to justwantprivacy.org, justwantprivacy.org, Get a copy of one of these initiatives, and I'm asking you to get 20 signatures, and I'm asking you to, to contribute $20 to this cause so we can get the signatures we need, 330,000 by the end of June. And so I'm asking you to do that personally. Tell me about your church. What do you think about, because I'm asking the churches, I'm asking the pastors to get behind this and help me get the 330,000 signatures we need to get this on the ballot. And that's what I want to say too. I want to clarify that point. Getting those 330,000 signatures does not change the law. It simply gets this initiative on the ballot so the people can speak. Your thoughts about churches and pastors getting involved? Well, um, we've been involved uh, since the get-go. You know, obviously you were talking about um, hearing about what I had uh, spoken about on a Sunday morning. And, and so this is, this is one of those things that I put before my people, this specifically. Uh, that I put before my people and um, told them this is where our state is going and you need to be looking at your representatives when you're voting for them, see where they stand on this kind of thing because this has got to stop. And uh, so we've, al we've already got the initiative um, at our fellowship. You know, it's been out there for weeks and weeks. You know, people have been signing uh, copies of, of that whole thing. So we are fully uh, supporting this. Thank you. Yeah. As a legislator, um, when I, run, when I run for office as an elected official, I tell people who I am, what I believe in, what I stand for, what they can expect from me mm -hmm. um, if I were to be elected. And that does not change. Mm -hmm. I don't listen to the most recent polls and the most recent opinions. 
I do those things that I promised the people I would do, hopefully so there's a level of trust and integrity uh, in me. Because the last thing I think our world needs is another politician. What we need is some leaders. Right. So I'm asking pastors to take a lead in this, but I'm finding pastors out there who say that the church and they as a pastor should not be involved in, in politics and political issues. Any thoughts on that? Well, I, uh, you know, I, I understand that from uh, the background of the, of the United States and um, what's been going on since, what is it, the, the early 50s with, the, what was it, the Johnson Amendment, um, that, that whole thing. I, I understand um, where uh, pastors are worried about their uh, 501c3, their, their nonprofit status and, and that kind of thing. But um, again, there, there is what scripture has to say about the stands that we make, and then there is what the government has to say. And uh, specifically, when, when you look at what scripture has to say about this, when politicians step out of line, when a government steps out of, uh, out of line, uh, the church is the conscience of the nation. Uh, we have always been called to um, promote the gospel of Jesus Christ and promote what's right and wrong. Obviously, the gospel is all wrapped up in right and wrong. Um, Jesus saved us from our sin, and sin is doing the wrong thing. And so you have examples of, uh, we've just been going through uh, uh, Matthew's gospel lately on Sunday mornings. John the Baptist was, was put in jail because he called Herod on, a, on an um, unbiblical marriage and ended up having his head cut off. Now, I, you know, I understand, I, I like it that John the Baptist did that, and I understand that um, if I make stands like that, I might get my head cut off, you know, uh, mm -hmm. uh, figuratively speaking, you know, maybe literally nowadays, but uh, figuratively speaking at, at, at least, but that has been the, the position of the church for thousands of years, where, where we have uh, been uh, the mouthpiece for God, um, letting people know what the, what the scripture has to say about things, and um, I don't think that because of a nonprofit status that we should stop doing that. They want to come and try to take away my nonprofit status. Okay, you know, and then people will give, and they may not get a tax deduction. Okay, you know? amen. You know, it's like I don't, I don't really care about all that stuff. We do have, you know, we do have a, a nonprofit status, and uh, the government is free to take it away if they would like to. But um, I'm not going to be somebody who shuts my mouth about moral issues uh, because the government says I should, I should do so even if it gets to the point where, it, where it's a prison sentence. And again, you see this in scripture. You know, Paul the apostle was put in prison a couple of different times, and specifically because of the statements that he made about right and wrong Amen. and about the gospel. And so if you travel, should be doing it. If you travel I-5 southbound in Chehalis, Washington, on the east side of the highway, there's a big political sign there that says, is truth the new hate speech? Yeah. And it's, it's, it's just, that is so, I mean, to me that's so right on because I appreciate pastors like you. I appreciate coming to your church because I know that without fear, without reservation, I can count on you to speak the truth of God's word from the platform. And, and I so appreciate what you just said because I've heard other pastors across this nation who have said, if you want to come and get me, come and take away our tax exempt status, go for it, take it, but we will never ever stop speaking the truth of God's word right. from this platform. Yeah. And so thank you for your stand. Yeah. And when you, when you look at the, you know, uh, the history in America, you had pastors who were literally, again, standing up in, in, uh, in their congregations. They were speaking about the reasons for the American Revolution. Um, you, had, you had pastors during the Civil War period talking about the immorality of slavery. Um, you, you know, this, is, this has been something that's been going on in the church forever. And uh, the, the fact that uh, the government is um, trying on one level or another to have kind of a stranglehold on speech in the church is um, something that should be ignored. Absolutely. And when yeah. I read Joshua 1, Joshua, the first chapter, I cannot count the number of times that it says in there, be strong and courageous. Be strong and courageous. Right. And it's really, and I love it when I get to the second half of that chapter, that the pe when Joshua comes before the people, and the pe people are now looking at him as their new leader after Moses has died, the people even say to Joshua, only th one thing we ask of you, 
be strong and courageous. Mm -hmm. And that's what I'm asking our pastors to do, to be strong and courageous. We, we spoke earlier about those 56 men who signed the Declaration of Independence, pledging their lives, their fortunes, and their sacred honor because they knew if they were caught, each and every one of them could be hung for, for treason. Mm -hmm. They knew they were putting their lives on the line. I'm not necessarily asking pastors to put their lives on the line, but just as you've said, I'm asking pastors to stand up and speak the truth from your platforms, from behind your pulpits, yeah. so that God's word will be shared because God's word says, blessed is the nation yeah. whose God is the Lord. Exactly. And most of the issues that we're, that we're facing nowadays are moral issues. They are they're clearly uh, spoken about in scripture. And um, what's, what's happened is, is as the church has retreated over a period of time, uh, that the vacuum has been filled by people who will open their mouths. And it's time that Christians start opening their mouths. We can do it kindly and we can do it winsomely, but we need to be telling people the, the truth about um, what righteousness looks like, what unrighteousness looks like, what, uh, what life is supposed to be. You know, I, I didn't grow up as a Christian. I grew up in, uh, in a family that was absolutely non-Christian. And so I, I came from a background that was um, uh, opposed to the things of God. And when I became a Christian, I saw that, you know, I, I knew the difference. I knew the difference between what it meant to be a Christian and what it meant to be somebody who was without God. And um, uh, frankly, my, my life was pretty messed up before I became a believer. And there are a lot of people out there, um, and, and this is for those who may think that uh, a um, bold stand on these things will turn people off. It will not turn them off. It will give them hope. It gives them some, something to look at that, you know, where they, where they see there, there's, there is a right, there is a wrong, there is a truth, there is a lie, there is a, a way that I'm supposed to be living my life. And each one of us, uh, down deep inside, we know that. The Bible talks about the fact that God's law has been written on our hearts. And so this is not something where people are clueless about these issues. And when, when somebody will stand up and boldly proclaim those things, uh, there are a lot of people who, who, just like me, that's what happened with me. I went to a church where a man stood up and boldly proclaimed what was right and wrong, and he called me wrong. He didn't know he was doing it, but he called me wrong. And I was like, you're absolutely right. I am wrong, and I need something here. And uh, that, that is um, always uh, how the gospel is gone. It, it's, um, it's not good news until you know how bad it is mm -hmm. in your life. And then it becomes really good news. Really, the best yeah. news ever. Yep, exactly. Yeah, my wife and I have, have gone to churches where pastors will give a very kind, loving, politically correct message. And then they will use, quote, scripture or something close to it. And we'll open our Bibles and we'll go, wait a second. That's not what it says. It doesn't because they'll yeah. do a, a twist on it to make uh -huh. it very kind and very loving and very endearing. But I totally agree with you. When people come to your church and they can hear you preach the truth of the gospel, the truth of God's word that's written on their hearts, mm -hmm. that the Holy Spirit confirms, that builds trust between you and them because now they can go, they go yeah, that is what it says. That is true. Wow. Mm -hmm. I can trust this man. And I, I think I want to come to this church because I can trust these people to tell me the truth. Yeah. And that's a, obviously that's an important thing. You know, um, uh, I, uh, again, it doesn't have to be a situation where, uh, where it's just always slapping somebody upside the head. Um, and it is absolutely the truth that God loves us intensely. Amen. But he doesn't approve of every action that I commit. And so I, I need to understand that uh, there is a way that life is supposed to go. And, and when life is going that way, it's good. And when life is not going that way, it's bad. The Bible says in the book of Proverbs that the way the transgressor is hard. Mm -hmm. And I know that by experience. You know, I was, I was living outside of a relationship with God and I was transgressing in, the, in a number of different ways. And it was hard. And when I came to Christ, there were some changes that needed to be made. I, I knew that I needed to make those things. Uh, but when the changes were made, all of a sudden life got much simpler, yeah. got a lot easier. And so, uh, you know, uh, I have family members that have been married multiple times, up to 10. And um, I've been married once, you know, for 35 years. And that, that, should, that should not be what my life is, you know, is uh, statistically. It should not be that. And it's all because 
of what Scripture calls us to. It's all because of Christ coming into my life and changing things. And he took me from a wreck and he made me into something that wasn't a wreck, at Amen. the very least, not a wreck. This year in the legislature, it's one of my most successful um, legislative sessions, and it wasn't necessarily because of what I did, but it was because of people I met. I met several people, um, men and women, um, who had either lives of crime, mm -hmm. lives of drug addiction, or homelessness, and each and every one of them surrendered their lives to Christ, came and testified before the legislature about how their life has now transformed. Wow, They're extremely God. successful. They're not homeless, no, no longer living a life of drug addiction or a life of crime. Very successful professionally, each and every one of them. And, and they talk about when they surrendered, when A, they were accountable for their actions, took mm -hmm. responsibility for their actions, and surrendered to God their lives totally and completely changed. Yeah, exactly. And, and, and that's, you know, we, hear, we read in the Bible that if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves, turn from their wicked ways, seek my face and pray, I will hear from heaven, mm -hmm. forgive their sins and heal their land. And that's why, you know, stuff like this, like this initiative, because I read God's word in the Old Testament and he tells us, God, very distinctly, if you will follow me, if you will follow my commands and my decrees, if you will follow my leading, you will be blessed. Yes, exactly. But if you don't follow me, if you do not follow my decrees, my commands, if you do not follow my way of living, you are naturally, it's just, it's, the consequences are, are not good. Right. Not for an individual, nor is it good for a nation. Absolutely. That's why this yeah. is so very, very important to me because I love this nation. God has truly blessed us down through the centuries. I could talk of so many times. I mean, you listen to the founding fathers talked about how, you know, the fact that we won the Revolutionary War against a superior military power right here in the Tri-Cities, mm -hmm. the Manhattan Project, mm -hmm. where we made the weapons-grade plutonium, which helped um, win World War II. It was, what was it, one week one week prior uh, to that reactor actually being started, they did not have the complete chemical compound of how much aluminum would be encased around the uranium that would produce that plutonium. But within a week's time, after all that 18 months of building, they, they got it right in a week. And it's just the miraculous things that God has done to bless this nation over the years. I want his blessings yes. on this nation. And when we leave his ways, it will not be good for us. Right. But when we continue to walk in his ways, I, I believe he will continue to bless us. And he, you know, even um, speaking about people who want this initiative passed because they want to have access to whatever restroom that they, that they would like to go into. You know, um, I, I've been doing counseling for a very long time and there are some very confused people um, with very hard lives and um, Many, many times um, people will uh, take a stand against something like this as, as being anti, you know, whatever, LGBTQ or whatever, um, and, and, uh, and that kind of thing. Um, but the, again, the reality is that when, when you are looking at what we're talking about, there, there's no basis in history for this. There's no basis in science for this. There, there's no, no basis in sociology for this. This, this is bad all around. And it's not just bad for my daughter or for my wife. It's bad for the people who are involved in it too. Amen. It just causes them, them more trials, more, more struggle, more confusion. It's, um, it's, not, it's not right to, to just bow to the proclivities, any proclivity that anybody has. I have all kinds of crazy proclivities that I have to deny myself all the time. If I just did whatever I wanted to, any time that I wanted to, life would not be good for me and it certainly wouldn't be good for the people who are around me. Yeah. And, and so uh, again, there, there are standards and um, those things, uh, you know, we could talk about this scientifically, we could talk about this historically, we could certainly talk about it biblically. And there, there is, there's not a reason for this. Amen. Yeah. So I'm asking you to get involved. I'm asking each and every one of you who might be watching us today, go to 
JustWantPrivacy.org. JustWantPrivacy.org. Get one of these initiatives. Get 20 people to sign it with you. And I'm encouraging you to contribute $20 to JustWantPrivacy.org so we can get 330,000 330, signatures by the end of June 2017. And if you don't have a home church, I strongly encourage you to, to visit Pastor Steve Winery at Calvary Chapel this Sunday in Kennewick, Washington. Pastor Steve, thank you very much for joining me. It's been a pleasure. My pleasure. Any, any closing comments? Uh, again, you know, when I, when I look at this situation, um, we're, we're in a situation in our culture where there's obviously a warfare that's going on. And um, if the Christians lose the warfare, we're not the only ones who lose. It's the culture in general. And um, lots of people get hurt um, when you do, uh, when, when you live a life that's anti-biblical and anti-God. Lots of people get hurt, not just the people who are doing it. And so um, you wanna have compassion on people. Um, you, need to, you need to understand what love and compassion really looks like. And um, I, I have a heart for uh, people who are in a situation where they're thinking in this kind of way. And um, Jesus can come and he can change that. But again, I'm not going to, I'm not gonna bow to uh, this kind of thing. There are other people that need to be protected too. Amen. So. Father God, we just come before you with praise and thanksgiving in our heart. And we put this issue and every issue in the United States of America in your hands. We put all of our faith, our hope, and our trust in you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you everyone for watching. Have a great day. God bless you. This program was made possible by TBN and by viewer donations to your local TBN affiliate, Radiant Light Broadcasting. To continue enjoying programs like this, please send your love gift or monthly contribution to Radiant Light Broadcasting, P.O. Box 301, Richland, Washington, 99352.